the Joe Rogan experience. As far as what I'm going to do next, yeah, you know, I want to keep experiencing these things, which to me are precious and rare. I, I want to keep going out into the wilderness. I want to keep experiencing it, and I want to share it with people. It doesn't mean anything to me if I don't share it to people anymore. I have no desire to go live by myself in the woods and not talk to anybody. It seems like you could have a skeleton crew of cameraman, editor, you. Yeah. And put it on, like, YouTube. That's what I've thought about, yeah. I think that's a move, man, because you can make real money off of YouTube now. I mean, obviously, you see these YouTube celebrities. They're very wealthy, and they're just doing things on YouTube. And you could just transfer your show over to YouTube, and I guarantee you people would watch. I mean, 100%. Definitely would need a camera. I definitely would need a cameraman editor. Yeah, cameraman and editor. Uh So it's like a three-person crew. So all the stuff that you had to deal with with all these other folks that weren't even there, these producers that were saying they wanted to fire you and all that other shit, you wouldn't have to deal with that at all. It would basically, and if you had an idea like, hey, I want to try this, I want to make my own bow and arrow and go shoot a caribou with it, you know, and do it with traditional methods and use the tendons from animals to make the strings and all the stuff that, like, the Native Americans did. Yeah. You could do that. Like, you could do, you could do, you could do whatever more, you want. You could do whatever you want. And that's what I think would be really appealing to people because just like if you started a podcast or just like anything else where there's no one telling you what to do, you get to find out who the person really is. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that would, that would be a great way to give you all the freedom that you want. Where, you know, I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to get enough advertiser dollars to pay for an editor and pay for a cameraman and and put it up there and start generating revenue. Yeah, some guys are really good. Like, um, you know, Les Stroud used to film himself a lot. Yeah. I tried that a little bit, but I can't film myself. It's like, I need the interaction. Yeah, Les Les is, uh, I mean, he's the only one that really did that without any horse shit, yeah. that live in the woods for seven days and survive off of whatever scraps he could find, then find some sort of a scenario that they piece together for the show. You know, the, the reason why Bear Grylls happened, the whole reason why that guy got a show is because they were trying to tell Les to fake things. Oh, really? And he wouldn't fake anything. And he's like, I'm not going to do it that way. So they got, like, let's get this fucking guy. So he would just go along with them. Bear Grylls just slept in a hotel. He'd pretend he'd drinking his own piss, all that stuff. I mean, well, Les is out there really yeah. surviving that way. I mean, you would see he would do like a seven-day trip and, and maybe he would find no food. And by the end of that seven days, you could see how much weight he had lost. I mean, he looked terrible. Yeah. And then he would get rescued as per, you know, how the, he would have to go to a drop-off yeah. point or a pickup point. But now he's all Bigfoot. Les has gone <laughs> gone crazy. He's Bigfoot. 100% Bigfoot. I get more questions about Bigfoot. <laughs> what is it? You live in the woods and you're supposed to be running into Bigfoot. You're supposed to be a Bigfoot authority. Two, two questions people are always asking about. Global warming, I'm not a scientist, and Bigfoot. Right. I mean- You're I'm not a scientist, but you uh, said you did notice that the ice is thinner. Yes. Yeah. Anecdotally, I can say that it's definitely warmer where I am compared to what it was- 15 years ago, the winters have been warmer. But How many years I in believe, a row have they been warmer? Oh, I didn't keep the data because I know there are a lot of scientists keeping it, and those are the people I'm going to defer to on global warming. Right. And I believe in global warming. I mean, I believe in the consensus of scientific opinion. What I have seen personally is just overall the ice is thinner on my lake, and that's a sign that over the whole course of the winter, there have been milder winters. 15 years ago, I'd get around four feet of ice. Now – the last few winters have been times when I went out there in April, which is when it's at its thickest, and there's only two and a half feet of ice. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I never saw mm. that, you know, 10 to 15 years ago. Um, the other thing is the absolute coldest temperatures. Since I've been out there, three times it went to colder than 60 below zero. They were all the first couple of winters, first two or three winters. I don't know if that was just, you know, coincidence or what. I'm not saying this is global warming. I'm just telling you what I've seen. Um and, like, there have been recent winters where the coldest it ever got was, you know, once or twice to 45 below. One of the first winters I was out there in March for, like, two weeks, it never went above 40 below. I haven't seen anything like that in the last four or five winters. Mm. Since I got on the show, the coldest temperature we ever saw was one time it went down to about 50, 55 below um, one day for a little while. I've seen times, like I said, where it would – Literally not go above 40 below for two weeks in March. Mm. Uh, that was first or second year I was out there. So, I mean, so that's, anecdotally at least. Yeah, that's just, look, 
we gotta we gotta defer to science on this thing. I mean, they're collecting data all over the world. You can see the Arctic oceans, there's less ice. You can, you know, measure the temperature of the ocean by sending sound waves through it. You can there's all different methods. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what one person sees in one place, but there's a consensus of opinion. That's what matters. Yeah, but it is interesting, your your own anecdotal experience, seeing that the ice is that much thinner and the, the winters are warmer. It is. Well, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm sure the National Weather Service yeah. has all kinds of data on Alaska. I'm sure, I'm sure. I mean, we, for instance, in Fairbanks, Alaska, they never used to use any salt on the roads at all. The reason being that it was too cold for the salt to work. Salt will only melt ice if it's a certain temperature. If it gets colder than that, it doesn't work. So they didn't even store salt there. The Department of Transportation didn't use it, which was nice. Your vehicles didn't rust out. But now there are enough times in the winter when it's warm enough that they actually are using salt in recent mm. years on the roads of Fairbanks. And you actually see times when it gets up to freezing. There are even freezing rain events in the winter, which didn't used to happen hardly ever. And now that's not that outlandish to have it, you know, get up to, to freezing in the middle of, of the winter some days. Bigfoot. <laughs> what about Bigfoot? I just can't believe people waste their time talking about stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, for someone like you who actually lives in the wilderness, and you actually live in Alaska, which is one of the places where people supposedly spot Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah. It's because a lot of nutty people go to Alaska. They call them end of the roaders. Yeah. You drive until you can't go any further, and then you camp out, out in the car. woods for a while and see Bigfoot. Yeah. Does Les Stroud really see Bigfoot? See? Oh, I don't think he's ever seen it. <laughs> but show's, he believes it's out there? His show's sad. It makes me sad. Because he was like a really respected guy doing the survival thing. And, yeah. you know, I think it was a really interesting educational show, and it showed people how hard it is. But then he got hooked up with this guy, and he was filming these Bigfoot shows, and the guy was completely full of shit. There's like a fucking, he's wearing a mask, pretending to be Bigfoot in the woods, filming it, high resolution. It looks so fake. You should see the, show the, the fake, because it's so dumb. It's so dumb, it hurts your feelings. Like, you're like, what? You're doing this? It's like, and, but it's real popular. That's the problem. If you have like a survivor show, you might get X amount of people to watch it. If you have a Bigfoot show, what is, you might get double the number. What does that tell you about our culture? Not good. Look at this. <laughs> this is the video footage. This is, he says, he said this is a, a close up, high resolution of Bigfoot. Look, look at that thing. How <laughs> fake is that? <laughs> look, he's going to zoom in on it. <laughs> uh -oh. It says the it, Todd standing Bigfoot video as seen in Survivor Man Bigfoot show with Les Stroud. What's going on? People are really... Oh, are the people sad. that are watching this stuff actually believing it or they just find it entertaining? There's people... It's so you know, stupid, it's funny. coma, sitting on their couch, sitting in front of the TV, thinking about when they're going to go to bed. What are they gonna, look how dumb that looks, man. Look at this fucking stupid fake... Bigfoot face, and they're they're sitting there going, "Whoa!" Well, they wish it was real. They wish it was real. Yeah, they wish it they was. They want real. it to be real. They want there to be some large primate living by itself in the forest. A small number of them, not that many, just a small number of them. Just I've seen some crazy stuff, but it wasn't Bigfoot. Well, here's the thing: if there were Bigfoot, why wouldn't there be thousands of them all over the place? What's going to stop Bigfoot from breeding? <laughs> Bigfoot would beat the fuck out of a bear, kill a mountain lion. Like, what would stop a Bigfoot? You're talking about an 8 to 10 foot tall gorilla? What the hell would stop that? That would be the king of the forest. And what would stop us from seeing the thing? And, and what would stop us from finding a body? Yeah. What would stop us from finding- the bones. Uh, yeah. The on. skeletons. I mean- How about an ancient one? You know, you know, in a site, like, you know, when they, they find these mastodons and saber-toothed tigers and things that existed here 10,000 years ago, yeah. why don't they find a Bigfoot? Yeah. Huh? Come yeah. on. <laughs>